So a few years ago, I find myself in this situation where I am just becoming obsessed with nutrition science. It's this space where these two different worlds that I'm part of, my studies as a biomedical engineer and obsession with understanding human physiology and neuroscience and all things about the workings of the human body and also being an athlete and being very interested in my own life and sort of optimizing for me being the healthiest and fittest I can be. So these things start to merge sometime in college and and I end up staying in this space that's being just obsessed, obsessed with understanding everything I can about nutrition science. Now, now the thing about nutrition science is it's an incredibly complex science. So, so when we're talking about nutrition, you know, what we're talking about is actually a lot of different things. We're talking about physiology and pathophysiology and and we're talking about biochemistry and we're talking about behavior and and me being the bit of extreme curious individual that I am, I wanted to learn it all. So I'm spending years, years and years learning the biochemistry and and behavioral pathways and learning the pathophysiology and and reading all the nutrition books that I can get my hands on. And, and all the while, I'm trying to implement what I'm learning in my life and what that looks like. What that looks like is examining different diets. Examining different diets, because we all do we all know how the diet industry works. If you're if you're here, I'm gonna assume you do how there's you know a diet that pops up and it's like this, this here is the best way for all of you to be eating. And then everyone gets all excited about it, and then a few years later it's like, no, this now this is the best way to be eating. And then this continues on like that. And what we have is these diet wars where it's like, should we all be vegans or should we all be paleo or should we really be getting rid of all plant foods altogether and just be eating meat? And it's it's this very battleground-like space. So I find myself here and what happens is I'm like, okay, Okay, you know, there's all these loud voices. He's all these loud voices. I've been trained as a scientist. I've been trained as a problem solver. I can get to the bottom. I can get to the bottom of the real answer here. What truly is the healthiest diet? What does the science say? And so I follow this question as, I, as I'm following this question and learning and learning and learning. I'm trying it out in my life. I'm trying out what I find to be the answer, right? The answer to what is the healthiest diet possible. I'm trying it out in my life. And what I'm experiencing is a battleground. I'm experiencing this battleground where my mind knows, my mind knows, don't eat that, eat this. And as I'm moving throughout my day, yes, sometimes I'm able to put together a meal and enjoy it and it's amazing and I feel good. And other days I'm just in a battle, a field of battle over forcing myself to not eat something that I really want to or just being extremely tired and not having the time and energy to put together the thing that I've told myself I need to be eating. And this goes on for years. This goes on for years and years and years until 
until I finally realize the very core of everything that I teach today. So here's the thing about nutrition science. It's that there is no perfect solution. There is no perfect diet. Yes, are some diets better than others? Do some tend to be supported by better science than others? Absolutely. And also, we are all our own unique human beings living life that is so vastly complex that when it comes to forcing ourselves to fit a mold, some ideal version of what we should be doing, well, a lot of things come up. Number one, number one is stress. It is extremely stressful. It takes a lot from us to make ourselves fit some ideal mold. And because of that, because of that added stress, what happens is we often experience negative health outcomes. Anxiety, gut problems, the list goes on and on and on. So if you're coming to the table being like, I want to eat healthier, but the way you're doing it is just adding on tons and tons of extra stress, is that actually leading to a healthier outcome? Then, of course, there's all the very real facts of life. Do you truly have the financial means, the access, the time to make yourself fit that mold? That is, I need to be eating this and not that. And the third thing, the third issue here is the fundamental nature of this problem that there is no one diet that is actually going to be best for all of us. There is no one diet that is going to be best for you day after day, week after week, month after month. The fact of the matter is, as complex beings with ever-changing lives and ever-changing biology, what we need to eat, right, what's best going to nourish us, that's going to change. So how do you know How do you know from reading a book or a study or listening to a podcast about some optimal diet, how do you know whether that eating style is actually going to be best for you? This is where we get to pull in my favorite thing to talk about. All of my work in the world has everything to do with getting out of the space that is believing we can think and analyze our way through all of our problems and all of our challenges. So the fact of the matter is, life is too complex. Whether it's what you're eating, how you're exercising, most all decisions in life are complex. There's too many factors at play to actually be able to make a perfect decision and to make any good decision at all purely from our minds. So what do we get to do instead? Let's take a moment here. Let's take a moment here. If you're new to this, I invite you to really enter into this with curiosity, some playfulness, like, whoa, where is this girl going to take me? We're going to keep things very simple. I've been here chatting away. It's taking a moment to drop down into your body. So taking your attention away from all this chatter, it's feeling for a moment down into your body. 
what's alive in this space? If it helps, you might want to begin by feeling your feet on the floor, your seat in the chair. Be witnessing a few full breaths. Breathing in and out. Just being witness to your breath, being witness to the sensations in the bottom of your feet. Just take a moment to ground into your body. And from the space asking, what's alive here? What's alive in this space? Maybe you notice a knot in your stomach. Maybe you notice a certain temperature, some heat. Maybe you notice a vibration in your skin. So what sensations, what else, what's alive here? So now I was first making my way through nutrition and any other lifestyle-based science. I was making all of the choices I could from what I thought was best. But what I never did was what we just did, dropping down into my body and being with what's actually alive here. Now, if I had done that, what I would have noticed as I was battling myself, trying to make myself eat the way I thought I should be, I would have noticed that I was feeling terrible, that I was feeling anxious, that there were knots in my stomach, that, that I wasn't actually making healthy choices on this path. So I do things different now. And, and what this video is not is a how-to. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not here to teach you how to eat. What I am here to do is to shed some light on what happens, what happens when we make dietary choices in this way that we've been programmed to do everything in life, which is overanalyzing everything with our minds and doing so in a way that we're disengaged from our bodies. Everything I do these days is all about bringing your body, bringing the rest of yourself online as you're moving through life, making choices. And yes, food choices, what you eat, that's something that you have to do multiple times throughout the day, every day. So how can you perhaps improve your ability to do this. Keeping it simple for now, keeping it simple with this invitation to make those choices, bringing in those other parts of yourself. I, you see me closing your eyes because I just start to naturally drop in and feel like what's alive here. Do I need to be eating now? Would it benefit me to go put together a meal? What, what, be what is best in that meal? Yes, bringing in those facts that we know about what sort of tends to make a healthy meal. Yes, bringing in the plans for today. You know, as a runner, it's super important to me to plan out what I'm eating so that I don't have gut issues later on during my run. Or if I've ran in the morning, you know, taking that into consideration. And also bringing into consideration what's alive 
What's alive in your embodied experience? What is your body telling you? Are you tired and feeling weak? Is your body telling you, oh my God, I need so much food right now. I'm so hungry. So telling you, you know, I'm still pretty satisfied after that dinner last night. So maybe I don't need the huge breakfast. Your body has so much to tell you, so much information and wisdom to provide you. If only you listen. So keeping things pretty simple for today, keeping things pretty simple. We, I had made the decision to stop talking about nutrition as I moved over into my embodiment work and, you know, focusing more on healing the planet and our ecosystems. But what keeps coming up is that this conversation has to be part of it. The fact of the matter is what we eat has such deep implications for our mental health, obviously our physical health and well-being, and the health of our planet. And, and I'm thinking as I start to plan out the future here that um, that some of those conversations are going to be more present here in the future. So I was testing the waters a little bit with this little look into a more embodied way to make our dietary decisions. So really coming from my own direct experience of doing it in a way that was truly so harmful so harmful to myself as I did did try so hard to make all the best choices based on the best science available. Doing the hard work that was understanding the science to my best ability possible, which <laughs> I don't know if you've ever checked out. I'll put a link to it. Your Health Reprogrammed, my, my original website. Boy, there's a lot of science there. Boy, there's all the pathways and mechanisms. And I had so much fun learning all I could about the science. And, and it didn't help me in the way that it needed to. If anything, perhaps it merely, perhaps it added stress and didn't didn't serve me in the way that I wanted it to. And that's not what I want for myself moving forward. It's not what I want for you, which is again, why we're starting to shine some light once more on this topic. So if you want me to talk more about this, you can let me know hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, leaving a comment. As we move forward, of course, we'll, we'll continue to weave different themes in here. I have some other fun things to talk about as we continue to step more fully into this more fully embodied way of living life. So with that, I thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.